Kenny with Fish Multifamily. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about step 13, which is close. So if you've gone through the LOI and the contract and due diligence and financing and all those things, it's a huge accomplishment. Now you get to the point of actually closing. So this is a, a pretty short step, but I really wanna do is focus on kind of some of the timeline and the different activities that happen in, uh, with each step to kind of give you a perspective there. So closing, you know, 40 to, 40 to 70 days in total, typically. Um, so maybe 30 to 50 days for your loan and another 10 to 20 days loan commitment after the loan's been approved. So people say, well, how long does it take? You know, 40 days is short to close from the time you sign your contract, right? Uh, 60, 70 days, very common. In some cases, it can be longer than that. So I'm gonna go through kind of just more on a typical type structure. So you have a timeline here. You can't see it, I'm gonna blow it up here. First part, you start. Right, you have a letter of intent. So, and then, you know, letter of intent's accepted, let's just say a week later. You know, it could be the same day, it could be two weeks later, but just say it's five days later, you get the LOI accepted. You receive the contract, you're gonna work that for, you know, uh, a week to 10 days, uh, things like that. And then your attorney's gonna negotiate and things like that. So now you're actually out, you know, 20, 25 days. You sign the contract, in this, in this case, day 26. So now you're, you know, a few weeks into this thing and can it go faster? It can, and we've had contracts that have taken two months to get signed. So it just depends on the deal. Um, it's not uncommon for it to take a couple weeks for a contract. Uh, and once you start getting, get used to the, if, if you have the option to use your own contract on a deal, it can be faster sometimes because you're not having to change stuff or review stuff. Now you're working on the, well, I'll rely on the seller to have to review it. So that can be a delay there. You put earnest money up down on it, let's say in day 28, you provide due diligence material, the seller gives that to you, that's a list of all their contracts, a list of all their um, uh, leases, lists of their profit and loss, things like that. Then you go in, a few days later, you're doing due diligence starts. So now you're, you're 30 days in from the LOI um, start date. You have a loan app that you might have to do. So if you're getting a loan, you have to fill out an application and typically you have to put a deposit down to do that and, and pay pay that. You're gonna go with a title, check with the title, figure out what title issues might be there. And then you're gonna maybe start investor legal docs here. It depends. Uh, lots of times you won't start legal docs, at least as far as the actual creation of them until after you get through due diligence. And the reason for that is because you might not know if you're gonna move forward or not. So that's kind of a timing thing. Now you're at day 40 and you have due diligence report. So due diligence, due diligence report is, remember we talked about engaging a third party company that's gonna, professional, that looks at your plumbing, electrical, roofing, everything like that. They're gonna give you a report. The report should include pictures and estimates and, and things like that. Things that need to be repaired at the property. And then you're gonna review that. And then due diligence period ends, day 50. And then day 55, you're gonna finalize the docs and then this is investor docs and send them to investors. Uh, and then you might have a webinar and stuff in there between as well, kind of where you're, you're kind of going over presenting the deal. And then, you know, about 10 days later, investors complete and wire the funds. Some investors will do it the same day you send them. Some investors will wait. Only thing I would say is if you have it where you, you have a deadline, right? You have to have funds in. You want the funds in earlier than the deadline. If you're closing, let's say May 15th, don't ask investors to have you know funds in by May 15th because people just delay. I don't know why it takes them so long sometimes to do it. It just does. Uh, and it can, it can uh, sometimes it'll go past even the date. So you want a few week buffer there. So have them come in a few weeks before you actually need all the funds. That way some investors are getting in in time and some investors might be dragging a little bit out further and, um, but end of the day, you want it all in before you close as much as possible. And then loan is finalized, you know, around day 70 ish. And we give a range of 70 to hundred because there are a lot of things that can happen in there, but that's kind of a, a timeline before you close. So a lot of steps, we've talked about these steps in, in um, the previous uh, videos as well, but you kind of see in order how it happens and you have a certain time frame you have to work backwards from. So if you have a 60 day close with no extension, you better hustle 
and get your due diligence done as fast as possible. You better hustle and get your loan application in and things like that because they might need 45 or 50 days to do the loan. So you have to work backwards for that. Um, again, we mentioned previously too, always try to have an extension in there. That's why you have the range, you know, here it's up to 100 days. Typically, 60 days, normal. 30-day extension is very common, which would put you around the 90-day time frame, And that's kind of a, a typical uh, from front to back. And then, you, like I said, you close the deal, hopefully celebrate your accomplishment. It's a huge deal to close it. Some things to pay attention to. Uh, you know, one, you don't have to close in person. So people say, oh, well, I have to go meet somebody to close and sign the documents. No, I never do. Um, we can get like a mobile uh, notary as well, come to your location. That happens all the time. Uh, you have a good example. Uh, lots of times too, just as a, as a general statement, uh, pay attention to the documents you're signing for closing. Uh, a lot of them have to sign in blue ink. It has to be in blue ink. So, you know, I was, we were out of town, Tamil and I were out of town. We had a closing that day. I had to sign some documents. Uh, I went to the FedEx office. I had to get documents notarized. Uh, FedEx didn't notarize, so I had to go to uh, the bank. The bank had no blue pen. I mean, it was just a, a, I mean, like literally, no joke. And then I had to go buy, you know, a pen, about 10 of them, because it came from the dollar stores of 10 blue pens, just to sign a document in blue ink. So you might be running around, so don't be surprised the last couple of days before closing, you're running around doing these last minute things, trying to get stuff closed out. Uh, you want to review the settlement statement. Settlement statement just says, here's all the money coming in. Uh, to you, the buyer, you know, the seller has both both on there. Really pay attention. Uh, you might get a settlement statement today, and it does. It's missing a bunch of stuff, and they know it's missing a bunch of stuff. And it might you might get ten versions of that, like no joke, before you close. But things you want to pay attention to: is the loan amount correct? Uh, do I have is the earnest money I put down? Is that correct on there? We have an example here recently where I thought it was wrong. Um, it didn't include all the earnest money we put down. Well, they actually had part of it, I don't know why, part of the earnest money we put down was under a different category. And again, I don't know why, but you have to pay attention to that. If it doesn't look right, ask them. Pay attention to prorations. So proration of rents, for example, meaning maybe you close a deal 10 days into the month and the seller gets the first 10 days of the rent and you get the last you know, 20 days of the month of the rents security deposits, things like that. And again, I remember you're gonna review multiple versions of the settlement statement, unfortunately. It can be frustrating, uh, just get used to it. Um, but you're gonna to have to, like I said, double check to make sure that's all correct because if it's not correct and you try to get something corrected after the fact, it's probably gonna be a big challenge. It just really is gonna be hard to do that. Especially if you're trying to ask for money back from somebody. And then, like I said, celebrate your victory, right? You went through a lot to get to where you're at on this. Closing a deal is a huge deal because there are a hundred things that can go wrong on a deal. One thing can kill the deal and that could be throughout the entire process. So again, uh, you know, follow that timeline as far as the steps. Uh, make sure that you aren't missing any dates. We talked about this during the contract uh, piece where if there are certain dates on the timeline you have to meet like putting earnest money down or putting the extension fee down or notifying the, the seller that you're going to move forward on the, on the deal. Make sure you have a timeline and you don't miss those dates. Do it early if you can. Um, the other thing just to, to mention here, like on the settlement statement, you're going to have a number at the bottom and the number is going to say what you as the buyer have to put in uh, to, in, to wire in to close the deal. You know, again, remember some of the statement changes throughout, you know, these versions, but even in the final version you get, don't send in just the amount that you need to close. You want to send more money in and they'll give it back to you. Don't worry if, you know, if it's going through like an escrow and stuff like that, don't send in just the, the amount because if you do that, it has happened to us and uh, we send a little bit more in and then the guy said, oh, you, you need another $65,000 because some things were missing on the settlement statement and they were legitimate things that were missing. Um, so we had to wire more money in there and you're, you're trying to close and you know, the seller could say, well, I'm sorry, that's your guys' problem. You messed up. And he could say, well, I'm going to, I'm not going to um, move forward with the deal. He could do that. So make sure you wire in more than you need in there. Again, you can get it back. 
uh, after the deal closes. So that's an important point. And uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's a, it's a short uh, video on this uh, process because really it's just a summary of the first 12 steps. And now you're getting to the point where you're gonna close the deal. And the most important things really are reviewing uh, the setup, that settlement statement, making sure it's accurate and correct and making sure that um, you're happy moving forward with it based on the information there and asking questions. If you don't understand it, it can be confusing looking at a settlement statement sometimes. If you don't understand it, make sure you ask questions. We had an attorney, uh, he had his, I don't know why, but he said he had his own software for his settlement statements he'd present, that he would uh, produce. And uh, I, I didn't even understand it. I'm not even joking. I couldn't even understand what he had on there. We had to spend like a half hour on the call trying to figure out what numbers are where, where he's putting credits and things like that. So unfortunately, everyone isn't the same. The gist of the concept is, but again, if you don't understand something, you're talking potentially thousands and maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars, make sure you ask questions. So uh, we'd love to connect with you. If you wanna reach out to us, our website, uh, thinkmultifamily.com, follow us on social media, and we'll uh, talk soon.